Shut up, listen up, everybody, what up? Gonna put it in the podcast, what's, what's up? We talk, we laugh, we sing, we dance, we will do anything if you give us a chance. We'll play one time, it'll help us out. All truth, no lies, no, it's never a doubt. If you like rants, tirades, and honest opinions, we shoot from the hip and we'll hear with precision. Give us one chance to play Opinion Bros Podcast. Hello? Can you, can you hear me? Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you got you sound really clear. Oh, uh, do I? Yeah, you sound like Crystal, dude. Well, I had a, a thing installed in my throat that allows, uh, I don't know, man. I, can't. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to go with like a Hellraiser route where you're like, I, you know, like it's painful, but I'm super clear now. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's painful, but but it's also pleasurable. So but it's also ple- <laughs> Ew, <that's Yeah>. pleasurable. <laughs> well, hopefully there's, uh, you know, this room now that I'm thinking about it might have some echo in here, but mm-hmm. um you know what? Whatever. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was definitely uh it definitely sounds queer, so you're good. Okay. Um so let's see. Um yeah, you ready to get into this? Hey, I'm I'm meta. Oh <laughs> all right, cool. So I'll just start and you know, introduce ourselves or whatever. Okay, go um, ahead. So, welcome to an episode, a new episode of Los Piña Bros. It's only me today, Alberto333, with a special guest who we've had before, uh, Alex, or what do you call yourself now, nowadays? I mean, what was it that uh, your daughter called me? Future Alex, right? Future Alex. Yeah, yep. so Future Alex, I, I think I'm going to stick with that. It's just FK, oh. sounds cool. I'm going to put that. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. It's pretty good. Uh, so how have you been? I mean, we, we've been texting each other here and there, uh, but haven't really spoken in who knows how long. Yeah, no, uh, it's been a while. Uh, but yeah, I've been pretty good. I've uh, been playing a lot of Modern Warfare 2, the new Call of Duty came out. So I've been uh, busy grinding that for the release of Warzone 2. And then the new mode DMV, which is like a Tarkov for people who aren't good at Tarkov, so I'm pretty excited <laughs> for that, because that was that's that's me. I'm the target audience for that. Uh, so yeah, I've been doing that, watching some shows, uh, watched New Hellraiser, watched Cyberpunk, which I think we're going to talk about uh, talk about today. And, yeah, that was going to be yeah. our topic. Uh, yeah. Just, sorry to cut you off. Just, oh, no. Yeah, real yeah. quick. Uh, you know, just wanted to do a, like, what we've been up to, mm-hmm. and, and then just get into Cyberpunk... Um, 2077 mainly the anime because that's what we both watched um but you know just going back a little bit you were saying you've been playing modern warfare 2 um you know i haven't really played one since probably modern warfare 2 back on the 360 (laughs) Uh, so you know i i watched the ign review for the campaign Mm -hmm. um and I think they gave it kind of like a mediocre score. Yeah, that's not accurate. I don't know what okay. IGN was. Uh, I don't know what they were on because uh, they gave this one a mediocre score, but they gave the last one, uh, the Van- Call of Duty Vanguard, or at least last year, a better score. And this campaign's infinitely better. Uh, it just flows really well. It takes a lot of inspiration from Sicario. Uh, I felt like with a lot of like the cartel stuff going on and how cartels are terrorist organizations and really good. I thought it was, I thought it read like a Tom Clancy novel, but apparently I didn't like that. And but I think OG COD players from the first trilogy, uh, such as yourself with Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, you'll enjoy it because there's a lot of callbacks towards, I won't spoil anything, but a lot of original characters appear in that, in this new uh, one they came out with. Okay. And, and, um, so that's campaign uh, and multiplayer. Is that like, is it still pretty much the same thing? Uh, yeah, I heard, I, mean, I think. The, it, it, uh, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I was going to say it's, it's run and gun call of duty. Uh, the biggest thing is they fixed a feature called slide canceling. I say fix because <laughs> uh, in modern warfare 2019 and in Warzone, uh, and in Vanguard, it was actually an exploit, right? So if your character slides and you, so if you do like a, uh, on Xbox, it's BBA, right? If you do the uh, do that comp while you're sprinting, so BBA, you would cancel it and then you would jump and it make you would get around the map faster. And it's an exploit, so you would uh, <laughs> okay. break people's cameras and stuff. I didn't mind it; I liked it because it, it it would lead to some really cool movement plays. But they they fixed it and they made 
they made it feel slower, but you could still outmove people and you could still outplay people. If people are still complaining about movement in this game, you're just bad at the game. Like, accept that <laughs> fact. You're bad. You're not going to get better. Uh, there's a really funny TikTok I'll just send you where it's like this 45 year old man who's like shirtless, who's like, I'm so sick of these bunny hopping, cracked out squirrels. <laughs> like, time for the OG cop player to take their co- take their game back. And I was like, <laughs> there's a target audience, but I'm still completely dominating their lobbies and making them like yell at me in the in Def Com. So it's a fun game though. Uh, multiplayer feels like it's pretty smooth. There's some bugs and stuff, but everyone's really excited for Warzone and DMD coming out and multiplayer is coming out with a rank mode for the first time in Infinity War Call of Duty title. So everyone's really excited for that as well. So yeah, I, I if if you're a fan of Call of Duty, pick it up. If you're not, I'm sure Steam or uh, Xbox Game Pass will have like a, a Call of Duty sale pretty soon. But I will say uh, Microsoft did step in to be the big brother to us because Call of Duty, this thing where you buy the Vault Edition, you're supposed to get 10 XP tokens free. And so that's why I bought it. I was really excited. But then the really, really fine print, like super fine print, like Zoolander, a school for ants fine print, (laughs) it said only if you purchase through Call of Duty store. And I purchased through a Microsoft store, so I didn't get those XP tokens. Oh, yeah. So Microsoft stepped in with, like, that's not right. Like, please refund our players. So they ended up giving me free tokens. So I was pretty happy. But yeah, I I enjoy it. I think you would like it. Uh, obviously, I know you usually wait a little bit for, to get games like that. So if you see it on sale, I would pick it up though. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm 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 hoping once the Activision deal goes through with Fox or Microsoft uh, that they put some of these games on on Game Pass, but. From my understanding, maybe there's some contracts that Sony is trying to block that from happening. But I mean, I I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know what Sony because they they're all about like they don't want Xbox to have any like better features. They don't want like exclusivity deals. But did you know that uh, Xbox or PS5 players, PS4 players, uh, they actually have a twenty five percent boost in their weapon xp than xbox players and pc players uh and that's like something they advertise to the like playstation players get and it was like exclusive yeah it was like exclusive xp rates uh, to playstation products i'm like that's not right like <laughs> so <laughs> that's a little bit annoying and like i know that 25 percent is a lot but like when you're grinding a gun and you want to make sure it's like maxed out for Warzone, it does make a difference like it's i don't know it's just a little bit frustrating that playstation's whining about exclusivity and then they do this so don't appreciate it no i mean i you know i i'm very against some of their practices and um you know but yeah we can save that for another talk but yeah (laughs) i i I mean i agree like even if you're the slightest into a game like that then you're gonna care about that xp yeah you know what i mean and just to do that is kind of scummy to the players um i mean i i think the other controversy right now is with the harry potter game oh not harry potter um hogwarts legacy or something like that uh, okay so on playstation they're getting an exclusive potion or something like that <laughs> and, but but they're also getting an exclusive mission in a potion store or something something like that and mm. you know that's a little upsetting that i think think xbox will never get that and you know yeah people will make the argument oh it's just a side mission it's just this or that and but then you think about it well if that content's been created and you're paying the same price why don't i get that yeah yeah i mean maybe subtract five dollars from my from my price because that's you know but whatever (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Last thing I'll say is like, I do miss the days where it was like each console or system got their own like little like little free exclusive cosmetic thing that really didn't make a big difference. Like yeah. I remember I remember when Dead Space 2 came out, the PS3 got their own skin and the Xbox got their own skin they could have for Isaac. And it was yeah. like little stuff like that. Or remember, I'm, people probably don't do it anymore. Everything's through the Microsoft store and stuff. But like, do you remember like pre-ordering Gears? On like at GameStop versus like Walmart, you get like something different, you know. Like yeah, a, it was like that. Like that little stuff is fine. I think that is 
it's no big deal. It's a little cosmetic thing and encourage you to support whatever your local game, uh, GameStop or Walmart, Target. But now it's like big content that can like 25% more XP for people in Call of Duty. We call it uh, min-max players. So people who really want to maximize everything and minimize any mistakes they can make. That's 25% could be like, well, do I buy a PlayStation now? Because I can max out my weapons faster and get to Warzone yep. quicker. Yeah, you know, so I I miss the days like where like it was just really small little stuff that really didn't make a big difference. Yeah, yeah, I mean, same here. Um, you know, at least the the thing that I would like is if you pre order something, you get first access to an exclusive skin or some or first access to a skin that you can maybe later on get. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, um, six months later you can earn it. Like through yes. game, normal players who do it, yeah. thing, yeah. Um, you know, me, I, I'm coming from like Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo, but like back then, these games were just completely different from each mm -hmm. other, so that was understandable. Some of the games just had to be different, mm -hmm. um, but but now it's just like, well, both systems are capable of doing the same thing, so give me something, you know, if they did something like, um you know, like Mortal Kombat. Mm -hmm. The one on 360 got Kratos. Uh, or uh, the one on PS3 got Kratos. Okay. As an exclusive. And that makes sense because that's Sony, you mm -hmm. know, so they're yeah. going to put him in there. Um, if, you know, Xbox had gotten Master Chief, I would be fine with that. Mm -hmm. But, but like, once you start doing, like, a third-party kind of thing and it's not exclusive, it just gets really messy. I agree. Um, but um, what else? Uh, you said, oh, you watched the new Hellraiser. Mm -hmm. um, and you said that was good, huh? I liked it. Yeah, it was fun. It was actually a really entertaining, uh, like, moving to the hand Hellraiser, Hellraiser C uh, series. And but at the same time, the Hellraiser series has been pretty garbage for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, the bar is really low. <laughs> the bar is super low. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, now that I think of it, it was good, but like the bar is very low. Like it is not something that you like, they could have put like a, a 10 minute like anime and I'd be like, wow, this is good. Like, <laughs> but it was yeah. cool. It was like, you get, you get some more like lore stuff. You get some more like, uh, you know, Lovecrafty and like horror kind of thing and body horror, you know, it, it was cool. I, I definitely check it out. Uh, it's on Hulu. So you got a subscription, like just, you know, feel free to watch it. Uh, I, I enjoyed it, and then it's you know Halloween was uh, this past week, so it was fun, like kind of enjoying a little spooky movie kind of thing. Uh, but overall, it was good. I liked it, and then I watched uh, the new All Quiet and Western Front that came on Netflix. That's very good. I encourage anyone to check that out. It's a really good movie. What, oh, is that that's a uh, World War One or two? yeah World War One World War One okay. from the German perspective? So it's a little bit of a switch. Oh, wow. uh, okay. Yeah, they do offer a full dub though, but I recommend just watching it in the subs just for more authenticity, I would guess. Uh, but really, really good, very high quality, great acting, uh, depressing, I will say, but also a very, very good movie. So it's yeah. worth it. Yeah, it's worth it's it. Not... Okay. Yeah. What about you? What have you been watching or playing or reading? Um, let's see. Uh, yesterday, I actually watched Clerks 3. Mm. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I I saw part two a long time ago. Uh, I had never seen the first one. Um, and I, I enjoyed part two. Okay. You know, I, I enjoy these characters. I used to watch the Clerks cartoon when it was on for like two days. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it got canceled um, so quick. I forgot yeah. about that. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was funny. It was good. But um, then, you know, like I said, I like the characters. Um, and I like Kevin Smith. And yesterday, I actually had some time to kill because Katrina had to go somewhere. So I drove to Pilsen, dropped her off somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I was waiting at my brother's house. Um, and so I was <laughs> I had two Coronas and I put on Clerks 3. Sounds and, like uh, a great Saturday to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, it was good. Mm -hmm. So I had I had a nice buzz going and I was like, you know what? I'm enjoying this. Uh, it's probably it feels I don't know what the word is like maybe amateurish mm -hmm. um, 
like it kind of feels like not as high production value as the second one. Okay. Uh, but I will say it's a good movie. Um, and, and it was emotional. Um, and I mean, I won't spoil anything. Um, if you're a fan of the series at all, for sure, watch it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, again, the characters make it. I, I love those characters. Um, what else? Playing games. I've been playing. I finished Cyberpunk finally. Okay. Um, and I started A Plague Tale. I don't know if you've heard of that or that seen that. That sounds very familiar. What's that? Yeah, so this is the second one, um, and it just came out. It's a Plague Tale Requiem. Okay, the first one was uh, Innocence, I think. But I remember trying the first one, and I'm like, I don't have the patience for this. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> so it, you know, I'll say it's a beautiful looking game. Mm -hmm. You know, they really tried to get like photorealistic with everything, you know, and and they do nail it. Mm -hmm. Um. But the I at least the issue that I have with that then is sometimes the animation is not there. Okay. Uh, because the voice acting is great, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then you know they're like, oh my gosh, like we have to do this and we have to do that, and then their faces are like deadpan, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's the issue you run into when you try to do like realistic graphics. But um, anyway, so the first one. I got like 10 minutes into it and it was some stealth mechanics. And I'm like, dude, I do not want to do this. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I stopped. I stopped playing it. Um, but the second one came out recently and I had just subscribed to Game Pass. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to try it. Maybe they changed the gameplay a little bit. And um, I'm on probably the seventh chapter. Okay. But okay, so I'll, I'll say this. Graphics are still pretty great. Mm -hmm. Um the music beautiful, great. The voice acting great again. I like the characters. They're they're all cool. Mm -hmm. But the gameplay just I feel like suffers. It, it's just uh, kind of mid. I, yeah, I mean it, it's <laughs> I feel like a lot of games nowadays try to do this where it's like pump all the money into graphics, but gameplay is still like something you would find on PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's still just like, here's some stealth mechanics and and you can't really like do and do much with that, you know? Like mm -hmm. she, she's just, I don't know, like a teenager girl that, that the player plays and... Um, it's just like she can't do much in the beginning because she's fighting soldiers. So she had, you have to play it stealth. Okay. Um, so I can say any part with the soldiers sucks. But <laughs> <laughs> but the parts with the rats, those are more like puzzle types. And you have mm -hmm. to figure out how am I going to avoid... The, the rats have like... They'll eat you up if okay. you walk into them. So you mm -hmm. have to figure out how to maneuver the environment uh, around them. And I enjoy that gameplay, um, but I'll finish it, see where it goes. Um, you know, I, my younger brother, Alex, uh, he really liked the first one. And I had no idea that this, um, I don't think it's a spoiler because I guess the first one ended like that or mm -hmm. whatever, but it's realistic. Like it takes, it's like fictionalized uh, nonfiction. <laughs> okay. Um, and um, but there there are some hints of like a supernatural element. Um, and I find that really interesting when games do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you ever played Rise. It was like one of the launch nice. games on Xbox One. Oh, uh, the Roman one. That one was yes. awesome. But the yes. connect it had the connect uh, ah. stuff mm -hmm. with it. Yes, yeah. yeah. When I thought the connect was the future of gaming, but <laughs> I'm not yeah. gonna speak on that again. Uh, but no, Rise was cool because it was like it was like for historical fiction nerds, it was like a super. I loved it because I love Roman history, I love ancient history, and seeing like Rome front and center, but like a hyper stylized version of it was yes. so cool to me. Yeah, and and I don't I don't know if you ever finished it, but. 
Um, you know, it was very grounded. Uh, but then there were hints that like maybe the gods were guiding the main character and mm-hmm. you know there were hints of like maybe there's something more to this you know yeah um so yeah that's that's kind of how a plague tale is but um yeah i've been watching some movies here and there i started watching the behind the scenes for um it or it's like a documentary on the original miniseries um, okay cool and man it's it's great um, it's what's that one on I bought it. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's. I mean, it's cheap. It's like two dollars to rent, but I ended oh, up buying okay. it. It was like five bucks or something. But okay, um, gotcha. You know, I love. I loved that miniseries. It still gives me the creeps. Um, I think it's way better than the new version that came out. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't finished it yet. It's it's like two hours and a half, which is crazy. Um, okay so i'm so like an that's hour a in. that's a big documentary two hours and a half it, it's a you could probably watch it in parts and be okay with it yeah yeah for sure um but i think uh we'll maybe take a break right here and okay and we'll be right back all right go ahead all right stay with us hello and we're back from break uh hope you had a nice break and um i guess we just gonna get right into the main subject uh cyberpunk Mm -hmm. um yeah damn uh i finally finished it (laughs) after all this time what i mean when did it come out Uh, oh i think a little bit uh early no late september i think late september early october i think it came out uh (laughs) so it's been a while i i only i only watched it like i think a week and a half ahead of you so like we were pretty neck and neck on being behind uh, but I just was love seeing. I love seeing all the buzz that it was creating, uh, and people playing the game because I, I liked the game. I thought it was fun, but like it didn't. It's I don't know about. I think the launch was super rough. Obviously, we know that. Uh, but I think they really polished it up to the game, really playable at the moment. I enjoyed it, but I feel like I never got that fair shake from a lot of players. Everyone's like, "Oh, isn't that game like completely busted?" So I saw <laughs> the anime come out, and then I was like, it all, it "Create all that buzz and." Both forms of entertainment are awesome. And if it gives people into the game, I'm all for it. If it gives the people in the game into anime, I'm all for it too. So it's a win-win, to be honest. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I watched a dub version, and I thought it was super well done. Okay, well, just, you know, rewinding just a bit, um, you know, that's why I invited you to talk about it, because it's interesting. It's an anime, and then it's, an adaptation of a video game yeah um and what's what's funny is though is that uh you know cyberpunk is based i think on an old pen and paper uh game so you know it's interesting all these years later that finally like this world is getting big Mm -hmm. you know it they're just creating a, a really strong franchise out of this um but you know, just I I really don't like doing this because I always <laughs> tell my brother, uh, like just just forget it, don't do it. Um, but just real quick, would you mind s- summarizing what Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven is all about? Like just just in general, I guess uh, what the world is, the game or the the anime? Uh, I mean, same or thing. Little, oh yeah, like, okay. So Cyberpunk is uh like. I would say it's akin to Blade Runner is the closest one. Obviously, I take a lot of heavy inspiration from it or vice versa. I don't know which one came first because you're saying a pen and paper game, which I imagine yeah. was like an old school 80s pen and paper. But it's that cyberpunk aesthetic where it's like uh, our world has completely been overrun by like urban, uh, urban expansion, capitalist expansion. So tons of like capitalism to the extreme corporations really rule the nations and stuff like that earth is not no longer desirable place to be everyone wants to go off world where the air is cleaner the food's better and on earth is this amalgamation of like human uh cybernetics so stuff with like you know uh robotic arms robotic limbs enhanced eyeballs like all this stuff that like makes the human body faster stronger but with that comes a cost of like your sanity like I said, corporations run everything, but also uh, like everything's amped up by like 11, capitalistic speaking, like 
an ambulance will come and if they see you don't have the right insurance plan, they'll just leave you for dead and let like the lesser ambulance <laughs> come and get you. Like everything is like a nightmare version of what it currently is, yeah. which is kind of like a Orwellian like forego, like you know, being care like, hey, this could happen kind of thing, you know. So for sure. I like it uh in that aspect and I think it's a really cool, beautiful world in just like the ambiance of it. It's it's like realistic. When the fact that like this is what technology could lead to, this is what mankind could evolve to type field for me. And there's a whole bunch. It kind of just throws you in a world and it skips like a good solid like 200 to 500 years into the future. So you don't know like what how it got to this point. All you know, it's at this point, which is the coolest part to me because there's so much to guess. Yeah. But yep. yeah, so that's the cyberpunk in a nutshell to me. It's basically Blade Runner with a few tweaks uh, with a lot of inspirations and vice versa. But yeah, a lot of the same similar themes. Uh, I really enjoy it. I would just say the biggest thing, the difference is to me, and this is going to sound funny, is the lighting. Because Cyberpunk feels so bright and colorful and poppy, even the yep. video game to me. And Cyberpunk is very dull in lots of blues and dark and like orange. Uh, Blade, hues. Blade Runner, you meant. Yeah, Blade Runner. Sorry, what did I say? Yeah. Cyberpunk. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, Blade Runner yep. is that. Cyberpunk is very poppy. Like Los Angeles, like I think it, I think wait, it does take place in uh, Los Angeles or like the future version, Santa Domingo, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, I yeah, it just like I I can see that it's almost like a if someone were to create their cinematic version of Night City in Cyberpunk, it would be Blade Runner. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. Uh, whereas Blade Runner feels heavily like someone's vision of something uh cyberpunk feels like well this is the real world you know yeah um, but yeah 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 so so you were talking about the game uh did you ever finish it or no i have not finished it i'm about like a quarter way through i've been taking my time with it the anime actually got me back into it i bought it on an initial launch and that's when everything, and I at the time, I still had an Xbox One. So you can imagine how it went <laughs> for me, at least. Uh, it was chugging along. It was chugging along. My Xbox felt like I could cook an egg on it and it was going to take off like a jet. <laughs> so it was not doing well. The game was busted. Uh, I ended up just shelving it. Just for I knew it was because I was pushing my, my console to the max. Yeah, and it wasn't optimized. I get it. Uh, so I was like, I'm just going to come back to it. And then when the anime came out, I got back into the game. So I'm about a quarter way through. Uh, the story's okay. I don't mind it. I think the biggest thing for me is just being in a world and getting to play in the world and having that like that GTA feel that like I can go and do what I want kind of thing. Like I'm not like it's like a rigid storyline for like Modern Warfare 2 where it's like a shoot on rails or something like that. This feels like I can kind of make my more of a Borderlands, I guess, a feel for me at least. It feels like Borderlands in a different setting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't want to get into the game too much because I, <laughs> um, you know, there's this whole thing and, you know, you haven't finished it yet, but just some quick thoughts are, it's fun. Um, it is playable. I never had an issue with it really, um, like crashing too much. Maybe I had two crashes at most, but you know, I played that game for a long time, um, and it is fun. I like the characters. the The main story missions, I think, are the best. Mm-hmm. Um, but the game is not what they advertised, and it's definitely <laughs> like, you know, it, it's definitely like a step down from from The Witcher Three. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can see them like knocking it out of the park for cyberpunk 2 um you know this is a a a big like stepping stone i think like i i think they already said they're working on cyberpunk so so like this is the foundation they already know what to do and the next one's going to be better hopefully (laughs) fingers crossed yeah um but yeah i mean i want to get back into the anime um yeah, I finished it. Uh, it was, it was good. It was solid all around. Um, and I mean, I I don't even know what else to. Oh, I was this, a little this... ner- I was a little nervous because I remember you're like, I noticed I had the anime 
tropes <laughs> in it a couple times where they don't yeah. like there's still like a standstill scene they had dialogue over it and you're like why are they doing this like yes i'm like yeah. oh i was nervous like oh he's gonna hate this i was like <laughs> i got really scared <laughs> So I was really happy when you said you enjoyed it. I was like, oh, thank God he like gave it his fair shot. <laughs> yeah. So like, that's one of the things that for sure I, I don't like that they do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I, I, I kind of get it. Or at least, no, it's not that I don't get it. It's um, I forgive them for that mm-hmm. only because in the real like high stakes scenes and the action they animate the hell yes out of all of that stuff <laughs> um and it's like man like like i told you i'm, I'm an animation snob so mm-hmm. i i loved that animation everything looked so stylized but it fit perfectly and there, it's just great great art yeah um, and and i'm like okay I understand now why. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was like, give, give them, them give them because they're they had they, they get a budget and they're like, you can use this much money in each scene, and like, okay, we're gonna cut out some of these smaller ones and then use all that money to make this super awesome action sequence. Like, yeah. the, oh, the the world felt so stylized and awesome. And the crazy part is, is when you think of it thematically and like story wise. And the content it it's super dark like it's a very mature story it's super violent uh yeah. but the way they animate it doesn't feel that way to me it felt like <laughs> people are getting like ripped in half or their eyeballs popping out of their head and i'm like yeah it looks beautiful though i was like this yeah, looks no, gorgeous it, <laughs> yeah i mean i i really you know and, and i don't know if this is something i should be ashamed of but you know like i love gore mm-hmm. or at least when they when they do that and like i'm not saying gore in real life like like no 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 <laughs> but like you know if it makes sense within that universe like then 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 do it you know uh, mm-hmm. like you you play a game like halo 3 and for some reason that's rated m for mature because they show blood uh but you know you shoot a guy in the helmet and he just duh you know but a little grunts like, going like oh no yeah. they like die <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but like you know you play gears of war and you shoot someone that they, they blow up yeah and you know it and it's all part of the fun you know it's kind of funny too whatever but but i like that they show that in here because it's like dude the world is definitely messed up and like you were saying earlier if you're on your last leg you're bleeding out your limbs are missing if you don't have the right insurance, then nobody cares. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, I mean, they were even giving the main character, I think, some uh, some guff because he's like, "Do you have insurance? If not, then we're just gonna cremate your mom or or yeah, something or, like I, that." I think they were like, "Oh, we could have saved her, but she actually doesn't have the right insurance plan. She doesn't have the pl- It was the platinum, the platinum yeah. package. She's not platinum package, so we yeah. so we just like decided to let her die." And I was like, yeah. "This is terrible. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a the worst world ever to be in." And then like, yeah, just everyone going crazy when they go. Uh, what do they call it? A chrome cyber crazy or something? Psycho. Oh yeah, cyber psycho. Like, yeah. I think the the world is like, like I said, it's so incredibly violent, but it looked gorgeous at every single point. Like it was just like, wow, like everything was, I don't know, I, I, like I said, the, like even the romance scene where he is on the moon doing the whole dream sequence yeah. uh, or the virtual reality thing, like that was beautiful. The soundtrack too, I will say was awesome. The soundtrack yes. was great. The the music, I mean, what, uh, Akira Yamaoka, yeah. Yamaoka uh, from Silent Hill fame. Uh, yeah, dude. I mean, the music is so catchy and it fits that world perfectly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, just because you were talking about it real quick, you said the world is so gorgeous and stuff. This is something that I had text you about. Um, the amount or attention to detail in the show blew me away. Um, only because, you know, playing the video game for so long. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you see these streets, you see these locations many times. Um, so in the show, I was like, hey, that's that place. That's that place. So that's that's on the map right there. That's where you do this. You do that. Even there's one scene, I think, towards the end where they're uh, 
in a car chase and they're trying to drive away from uh Militech, I think it is. Yeah. And they're driving away and they're like, we have to get into the city. Um there is a just a quick shot of like an expressway that leads into the city or something. And and I'm like, dude, that is like exactly from the game. Mm-hmm. It it's that same area, you know? Um and the fact that they took that they actually did that instead of being like well, whatever, just, you know, make, make a it highway. Work. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it is that highway. Like, wow. You know, even uh, some of the characters come out um, and it's just I I loved that. Um, so. So, yeah, there was that. There was the music. Um, the story you... was decent, too. Okay, I thought the that's story. Yeah. Yeah. The, wow. the story was actually decent. I Because when, when I first read about the series and I first saw a trailer, I immediately thought of like, oh, this is uh, a show to sell the game. Kind of like how the yeah. transform the Transformers movies are made to sell toys. Like they're not really made for plot anymore. They're made to get <laughs> eight year old boys, eight year old boys, and you know seven year old boys, whatever. They excited about the movie to go and ask for Christmas presents around those toys. Like that's it. They're they're merchandise. Yeah, merchandise. The GI Joe movies are the same thing. Like so, I'm like, oh, they're doing this for the anime. Or, or this is for uh, the to sell a toy, just like Bionicle, you know, like whatever. <laughs> I'm not gonna take it seriously. But then I'm like watching. I'm like, no, no, this is actually like a good series. Like this is, yeah. Like uh, I watched it with my girlfriend, and she like enjoyed it, and like was like, wow, that was good. Like you know, like I don't have to worry. Like I didn't. She's like, I didn't feel like and there was no moments where it was like, I wish we knew what to go on this mission. Like, hmm. and it was like. By playing the game, unlock this scene. Like I, yeah. I didn't want any of that. It was a really easy story to follow. It wasn't super complex, but it was easy to follow. You follow what the main the main is the main character or David? David? No, David. David's the main character. Uh, he he's just like a down on his luck kid with his mom struggling. He gets kind of like adopted into a cyberpunk gang. Yeah. Uh, you know, works his way up, like deals with the corporations and. It's just an easy to follow story that incorporates uh, love, tragedy, comedy, like yeah, classic classic story beats that really hit the heart. And, and it's also a standalone, like no spoilers or anything, but standalone where if they don't make another season or they don't follow the main characters, I'm okay with it. Yeah. And it, it wrapped up very nicely. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, you saying that um, since I beat the game, I want to say that the the Netflix show is almost better than the game. Okay, um, it's just like I when whenever I was watching it, I was like, "Geez, they could have done this in the game, they could have <laughs> done that in the game." Like some of the stuff because I think you know once he gets in, inducted into that cyberpunk gang, mm-hmm. uh, he's like, you know, the big guy. I'm forgetting his name, but with the massive like arms, he's like, yeah, you got to work your way up to my Chrome mm-hmm. and you know, here, here's some money. You don't yeah. get a lot, but you know, you can buy yourself a nice gun maybe, or there's mm-hmm. this or that. And in the game, it's, it's not like that at all. And I kind of <laughs> wish it was just, it was done better mechanically. It's just, so yeah, at, that really surprised me like wow this this is a well put together story um there's not a lot of exposition it's kind of like here's just enough that you understand what's going on Mm -hmm. um and then just go with it um and i think both of us had agreed like that that main dude the leader of that gang um it was really interesting how they got into some of his backstory um Mm -hmm. just to show him he was a thin dude that was in shape, but then he started losing it uh, to that cyber psychosis. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's funny because the guy that created cyberpunk, uh, Mike Pondsmith, I think his name is. And mm-hmm. it, he's actually on Reddit quite. A oh, bit. OK. Um, but but he was he gave his own take on it. And I, hopefully I don't mess this up. But I think he, he was saying more like people that are prone to cyber psychosis already have issues with themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, There's something in their life that has gone wrong, um, whether it's background or like mental 
anguish, something. Um, and that's why some people are more prone to it than others. Um, and that he had made a, a, a really cool uh, comment. Like, that's why in, in the video game, you don't really get cyber psychosis because you have Johnny or Keanu Reeves inside him, mm-hmm. inside the main character, who he was saying he's already a, John, uh, a, a real crazy guy. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I guess that that affects his psyche, the mm-hmm. main character V's psyche, so that it's almost like you can't go crazy because you already are. Okay. <laughs> but I thought that was really interesting. Um, and I think that's why David in the Netflix adaptation, he he starts leaning that way because a lot of stuff has gone wrong. Mm-hmm. But they're able to bring it bring him back a little bit from that yeah you know? like he goes full circle kind of thing and just yeah yeah it doesn't have like that that like you know moment where it's pure insanity he has moments of it but like nothing to where like he's no the point of no return yes. kind of thing uh but yeah no it was a gift wrap little story that i really enjoyed there was no like hokey uh i know i harp on transformers a lot but i just think about the <laughs> one part in transformers 2 where it has megatron literally on like a mountain and he's like Till next time, Prime, when I return. <laughs> and I'm like, you might as well put like coming soon, June twenty second <laughs> of next year. Like don't forget audiences. Like, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> pre-order today. <laughs> yeah, that's where that's where like I was like I didn't feel like there was any part where it's like, oh, like I uh like I thought for sure they're gonna have a part where they meet the main character from the game or something. Yeah. And then yeah. it would be like What's your story? I'd be like, hmm, I'll have to do some research on him. And it was like, we order now. <laughs> like, or something. Like, yeah. I thought for sure it's going to have that. But no, it was a nice story that was like, they could end it here and it would be fine. Or they can do an anthology or pick up where they left off with another like offshoot or something. Or even yeah. do like, I don't know how much the game touches on it, but like the corporations war between Militech and the other company. Like, that whole Not war. Much. <laughs> yeah, th- th- there's a whole war between mega corporations that happens. Mm-hmm. Where what's his name? Adam Savage, I think is his name, right? Uh, a- Adam Smasher. Adam Smasher. Adam Savage is the Mythbusters guy, I think, right? He comes out. It's a crazy <laughs> twist. Uh, they do a myth bust of can you go cyber psychosis? Uh, <laughs> no, Adam Smasher comes out and it was like, oh, he was the hero of the fourth corporation's war and like. He has all these kills racked up and stuff. And I'm like, man, a series about that war would be awesome. Like, yeah. Yeah. So there's so much in that world that you could do that, like how the world gets there, how it could turn out. There's the off world colonies. I think there's yeah. the moon. The only thing about the moon that was kind of a letdown to me was like, it's like six flags. And <laughs> I, like, I don't know. I thought like, Oh, I thought it was gonna be like more colony. Like, cause I don't know. Correct I mean, me if I'm wrong. Are there more colonies than the moon or is that it? I, I don't know. Um, okay. But I, I can, I mean, I'm just guessing, but that was only one part. They didn't show you the, the whole moon. Okay, so I, gotcha. I, I'm not really sure. I imagine, again, if if corporations are a huge thing, I'm sure there's more to it than we're seeing. Okay. Um, they probably have, like, hotels. They probably have headquarters stationed there. You know, it's mm-hmm. probably a whole thing. I mean, there's just that world is so rich mm-hmm. um, and they can, they can do a lot. Um, yes. And I, I would not be upset if they did, like you said, another series like set in a different time period. Um, if the animation matches this, then I'm all for it. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. Yeah. The, if the story and the animation are the same, I'll watch it for sure. Because the also they didn't, they use some 3D, but not enough to where I was like, that looks disgusting. Please don't do that again. Like, it was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. they use it sparingly where they had to, and then they made up for in just, like, gorgeously hand-drawn scenes or digitally drawn. Like, it was really... Like I said, the animation was awesome. The story was great. Uh, it was a it was a welcome surprise when it came to, like, it being good. And yeah. I hope this... I hope this inspires other games, too, to be like, Wow, look at how many people are buying Cyberpunk or getting back into it because of this anime series. Like, yeah, I don't know, a Gears of War anime, something to help. <laughs> because... <laughs> I mean, like, they, they can, that's the thing. Like, um, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of Resident Evil. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
And it just sucks. Like, we've had some crap adaptations of that. <laughs> and, you know, th- there was a point where, where I hated the original film series. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, looking back, I really enjoy them now because they, they at least had a good time. Yeah. Um, and, and then, you know, they were coming out with this new adaptation and I was like, okay, maybe they're going to get it right. <laughs> and, and like, you know, it'll still be fun, but it'll be more like resembling the game. And, and I don't know what happened because the guy was like, you know, I love the series and I grew up with this. So I've been trying to keep it more line in line with the game as opposed to the other films. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, whoa, like this guy likes it. And, and it turned out, sh- <laughs> you know, <laughs> it turned out really bad. Turned and out then terrible. Netflix, Netflix did their own adaptation, and that was even worse. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I would like an adaptation done right. Um, but, but yeah, oh, th- I was gonna bring this up because I wasn't gonna watch the series. Um, so I was just looking up certain things of it and. All over Reddit, I guess uh, they were doing like a stream and uh, the people from CD Projekt Red Mm -hmm. um, and they were like, I guess they had told the anime studio, we don't want the the lolly in it. And they're like, no, we're we're putting she's staying, (laughs) you know, like they were so adamant about keeping her in. And Mm -hmm. and I'm like, man, these and and that was the thing, you know, I'm very tired of that those kinds of tropes like Mm -hmm. so i was like man i'm sure it's it's crap but um watching it you know what that lolly character i'm forgetting her name but uh she didn't get in the way like i thought she was going to um and they don't make a big she is sexualized like all the women in there Mm -hmm. um but it's not overdone i guess yeah um, so i, I don't say, know i think everyone about. everyone in the show is i feel like was sexualized though i will say it was evenly even though i don't like it i felt i felt like it was evenly sexualized because when okay. david has his his like glow up when that time skip happens <laughs> yeah it's yeah, yeah, like yeah. this is david <laughs> he is like a 12 he looks like a giga chad like he, <laughs> <laughs> he looks like giga chad he has like <laughs> perfect pectorals perfect abs and he's like, hmm, this is me now. And I'm like, whoa, David. I was like, because <laughs> David was kind of like a Blake Slate for you to kind of like, oh, wow, I was just like a scrappy kid from Brooklyn. Like, you know, like, <laughs> it's like that type of vibe. But then, like, never mind. He's Giga Chad now. Like, he's completely unobtainable. Yeah. And then the main girl that his love interest is like this gorgeous goddess lady. And like, everyone is kind of like that. But I thought the Lolly, ca- uh, you're referring to the the little she she looks like a little girl right and then she's actually right. older okay yeah she actually wasn't as bad as i thought she was gonna be to be honest like i felt That's, like yep. she uh she starts off like liking david and then i can tell she likes him more than a friend but those feelings aren't reciprocative so that then she just becomes like his best friend and his like center almost and i thought she was actually done really well especially her relationship with her brother and stuff and I don't know. I actually liked her a lot. I enjoyed her, and I didn't think I would though. I thought for sure she'd be like the annoying, wisecracking trope because she had some cringy moments a little bit sometimes. Yes. Like where she's like, "I love guns," and I'm like, "Okay, I I get it. You're a little girl, <laughs> and like it's funny that you like guns. I get it." Yeah. But but she also had some moments where she was really down to earth with David and like really try to bring him back and center him. Yeah. And then the ending with her character i was like whoa okay like <laughs> yeah <laughs> so dude, i did not expect that yeah yeah so they really bring it full circle and i really enjoyed her and i felt like it it felt anime without feeling too anime if that makes sense like yes it yeah. felt like the right amount of people like it, it was it was anime enough for me to be like yeah watch this show i think you'll like it like this is what anime can offer but i felt confident in being like I wasn't watching like, oh god, Albert would hate this part because it has like, <laughs> like this, you know, this dorky weird musical or like too many lolly characters, or whatever. So, yeah, I really liked it in that aspect, and I thought she was a she was a a fine addition, and she didn't feel overbearing. So I'll, I'm happy to capture it. Right. Cool. Yeah, I mean that's 
you know, just going back to what you had said, I think everyone was sexualized. Um, and, you know, I think that's just that world as well. Yes. Um, yeah. Because sex mean, is like sold everywhere. Like as yeah. a, it's like, uh, was it, there's that weird machine that the, the mechanic has <laughs> like the virtual VR thing that like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like Jeez. it's, yeah. Everything is so dehumanized in that yeah. world where everything's a market. Like, so it makes sense that like, that would be a big part of the world to sell, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, in the game, uh, like uh, whoever's played the game, there are so many advertisements everywhere uh, for sex or anything related to sex. I mean, that off the top of my head, I, I can see there's one advertisement of a, of a girl with three mouths and it says like <laughs> her one goal or her three goals are desire or something like that. And, Mm -hmm. um there's another thing called uh milf guard and <laughs> you know it, it's i think it's a play on their uh witcher series because there's a place oh called milf guard. I, I didn't even put that together that's a great <laughs> but, nod okay yeah right. so that's awesome. i mean i haven't looked it up to confirm but i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure it. that's that's um, funny though i didn't and, think about that yeah i mean what was the other one uh tales of a watson whore or something <laughs> like that and, and it's like the most popular tv series playing at that time so mm -hmm. and then you see all these people dressing however and uh, body modifications to do this or that so yeah i think it fits that world it's not overdone or at least it, it fits yeah it, it fits perfectly in that yeah world. if it yeah it doesn't feel overbearing it doesn't feel out of place it's not like how you watch a medieval fantasy and everyone has perfect teeth and everyone's gorgeous where i'm like <laughs> no you'd have cavities and you would probably be like you haven't taken a bath in like three years because it says, <laughs> because it says the Bible like outlaws it in your world or something like yeah this yeah. world it makes sense why everyone looks the way they do because like you said like cyber modifications are kind of like the go to to fix your insecurities like oh you want bigger arms get bigger arms with like robot uh, cybernetics you want like uh, a mega giga chad chin get a cybernetic for like a metal jaw like everything is <laughs> built to where you can. You can buy your buy your way of insecurities. You don't have to worry about like looking the way that you would want to, you know. So it makes right. sense. It fits the world really well. Yeah. Well, uh, I think we've covered it pretty nicely. Um, so yeah, I don't. I mean this this show. It's only what ten episodes. It's a recommend. Uh, definitely, if you've played the game, if you're all, at all interested in the world, it adds to it. It, it complements it. Um, it's done really well. If you're a fan of anime, for sure, I think it, it's a great entry into anime. It's a great addition to anime. Um, and what would you say? For sure watch? or eh. I give it a for sure watch. Definitely. I think if you like the game and you like cyberpunk and if you like even the cyberpunk genre, like you know Blade Runner, Ghost in the Shell, stuff like that, Give it a watch. If you like anime just in general, give it a watch because it's just a well done uh, futuristic anime that you would enjoy. So I think it's it's something something's there for all audiences. And a lot of people have Netflix right now. Uh, so go ahead and go give it a watch. Ten episodes, you don't have to commit. There's like no filler. Just sit back, enjoy, and have a good time. Cool. All um, right. Well, I'm excited to see what's next for that world. Um, and I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you for being my co-host. <laughs> uh, I mean, we'll have to see when we can do another episode all together. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Fun. Um, it's always great to have a guest come out because, you know, it, the dynamic changes. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll see what's next. Uh, I saw Black Adam. I don't know if you're going to watch it or you've seen it, but uh we'll talk about more things later so thank you for joining yes thank you for having me i appreciate it have a good one all right i'll talk to you later then and thank you for every thank you everyone who listened or is listening especially our fans in germany because for some reason we have like a five percent listeners over there so i don't know what's the german word guten tag you can say guten tag yeah say guten tag okay. or gesundheit Gozoon tight. There you go. <laughs> Boom. Done. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll see you everyone later. Thank All you. All right. See ya.